I'm Kate Tran, I'm project manager uh, in Skilled, uh, Skilled French company. So uh, we are working with Drupal and here's David, David Ferle, he's a technical project manager in, in the same company. We will talk uh, about uh, website factories uh, today. That, um, well, we see that uh, we've got a lot of types of website factory, so we'll see uh, what, uh, what website factories are, uh, which, uh, which benefit uh, it does, and, and how, to, how to build one, how to build one, one of the type of the website factories I, I show um, with uh, domain access suites. Uh, that uh, is a, a module that, well, uh, invite us to uh, build a, a website factory. So what is a website factory? In fact, uh, let's put a context. Imagine you, uh, you run a very large company, very large company, you've got your IT department and uh, like uh, tens, dozens, uh, like thousands uh, of uh, business or brand and each one of them would want um, to get uh, their own website. And this is a real problem for these companies to uh, get the, these websites managed because, you know, um, each business, business or brand will uh, have their websites done in their way and, you know, there's a loss uh, of control uh, for each one of them because different technology, uh, different hosting, different uh, websites to, uh, to maintain. So uh, the solution would be uh, the, this, this web factory. The main uh, concept is that the IT department, sorry, the IT department will have their website factory. It's an application that will build a different websites according to templates Yeah, I think it's broken. But no. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> I show it with my my finger. Um, so the website factory will come with um, different functionality uh, that can be uh, added to the website uh, they will build, and uh, this means all the business will have to ask the IT, uh, hey. I want a website that's doing this, 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 this. Uh, please build it for, for me. And not uh, uh, asking to, you know, another provider, uh, third party agencies. It will be uh, completely internal to the company and um, sharing the same infra infrastructure, sharing the same code, uh, sharing the same database, not, on, not always, but well, we, we see that uh, later. And uh, these websites will be uh, completely maintained and um, controlled by the IT department. Uh, what does it bring? Yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so what's the benefit to have website factories? Um, like I said, you've got uh, an, uh, an, an architecture for all websites, the same architecture, the same structure, uh, that will lead to uh, better cost management because it will reduce cost and, well, a centralized cost uh, in, at the same place, managed by the IT, and then uh, re-dispatched in all uh, business or brands. Uh, obviously, lesser delay because, uh, you know, uh, that's pre-built uh, pre websites and they will be um, more fast, faster, to, uh, faster to, to be built. It's a matter of, you know, functionalities that will be uh, built in uh, the same application and uh, each brand business will ha have the opportunity to select the functionalities they want, maybe to create uh, new ones and then uh, create the websites quite easily and, and, and fast. 
Uh, same for um, the maintenance, because you know we you will have uh, dozens of websites sharing the same code. If one website had uh, um, a bug, a bug or uh, or security fix to to get, uh, each one of them when this fix will get uh, on live, uh, all websites will. Uh, get this uh, fix, uh, we benefit from this fix. No need to deploy for each website the same fix. Well, it will be one deployment and all websites will, uh, will be updated. Um, it also means that uh, at some point you have the same team, the same development team. Uh, development business, well, uh, you know, uh, pulled together to do all the website and not, uh, as uh, I said earlier, that would be uh, several uh, third party agencies or providers that would be the same team. So in this team, you will be able to, uh, how can I say this? Centralized, you know, the, the, that's the learning. Um, it's the same than for the fixes. When you have a fix that you deployed on several sites, when the team will get uh, an issue, a uh, project management issue or, or, or anything else, uh, they, it would be the same for all websites because same team, same architecture, and that's a learning that could be managed uh, much more, uh, much easier much easier for all the IT departments and not have to, uh, you know, there's uh, this agency got this issue and then the, and then the large company have to get this issue uh, spread into all the websites. Same team, so no issue there. There's a point missing. Mm -hmm. Not sure it's a real point, so, so never mind. Uh, at the, at the, the same, at the same time, sorry, um, you know, uh, Drupal is quite a powerful tool to create websites, but that's, yeah, that, that's the difference between uh, having a framework, a content management framework, and content management system, where you have uh, the content management system which can, which can uh, create um, a website quite easily, a small website quite easily. Drupal is, is a system that well, a framework that will be uh, that will enable you to create a content management system. So you've got a step, another step, uh, create the my content management system. So and then create the website. And for small projects, it's uh, additional cost, additional delay, and generally speaking, the uh, the companies don't want that. And and more if uh, they got. They, a month if they got uh, 10,000 or hundreds of websites uh, to, to create. So if you've got uh, this um, website factory is done, you know uh, that the CMS already done and then uh, industrialized uh, and uh, industrialized industry <laughs> allies. <laughs> so we industrialized the, the, the website creation process. Um, so uh, that's the deal. Uh, we've got wait, okay. We've got uh, plenty of uh, types. That's what I said earlier. We've got plenty of, type, of types of uh, um, website factories, um, and this architecture will be chosen by the needs uh, of the customer. For example, if the customer needs uh, to have a common code uh, to, to run and to maintain their website, we will rather use multi-site uh, possibilities for the config, and then you know it's uh, incremental. So code and configuration, we better use uh, inside a profile and um, uh, custom distribution, sorry some distribution with an inside profile um, to, to get this and uh, for our our topics. 
for code configuration and content sharing it would be uh, an architecture with domain access. Um, let's get uh, a little more detail about how it's working. Um, now, when you're in multi-site mode, like I said, multi-station level, uh, it would be infrastructure, of course, and the code, then you would be uh, able to have one Drupal core that's, um, you know, that's a uh, core functionality of multi-site. And for each uh, site, we'll be able to replicate them in several instances with their own configuration, own database, uh, content and users. And then this uh, quite easily with same functionality, it could be a shared functionality or, or, or not. And uh, about uh, independence, uh, which is site, you've, there's, um, how to say that, you know, you've got the same code. So one code, uh, when, when one instance will want to have uh, their own feature, it will be well, uh, obviously uh, done for all the websites. And so it's quite independent because you've got a configuration, database content, and users that can be split it, but obviously not the code. The second type, creating a custom distribution. It's quite, um, it's quite different uh, in the concept that, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, for this case study that would like uh, the open wide distribution where they've got um, their own distribution coming with uh, pre-built um, configuration inside profile and then spread it around uh, the internet and the other company could, uh, can, can take them, take them and uh, create their own website uh, using this uh, custom installation profile that's uh, completely independent from the distribution itself because, well, uh, when you take this distribution and then install it uh, in your uh, company, then we can make everything once uh, on distribution, changing the installation profile. But each website you will create uh, using this installation profile, we have its own database, database sorry, content users and uh, but uh, the configuration, well, it's in the install profile, so uh, if you change it, uh, it will change it for everything, uh, for every site. And uh, finally, the type that will be uh, discussed in this session, that would be uh, the one where um, you need to mutualize everything, but not the content. It will be uh, content affiliation in case uh, You've got, uh, you know, um, several websites that will be run in the same template, same structure, and but not the same th uh, theme, not 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 uh, particularly the same content or the same user, but uh, at the same time, domain access enables you to have uh, shared content and specific content for each website. We we'll see uh, a bit later how to how to do that. Um, but in this particular schema, we've got um, shared configuration, shared database, and it will be a um, uh, matter of access and permissions for the content. So that's the type of um, that's the type of website factory we'll we'll detail uh, now. And I let David do this. Give me the microphone. Oh yeah. Oh, je t'en prie. Je te fais la vas-y, je te fais. Non, c'est bon. Je crois que ça va. OK guys, so domain access. Basically, uh, I want to describe the concept. Uh, the main point is that you're going to build one website and then centralize and mutualize everything on it. Uh, you will have only one template, pretty much, and then the main 
uh, functionality that brings the, the module is to take some content or whatever content entities you want. So it could be a content type, it could be users, it could even be blog content and other kind of things. You will decide on which domain you want to assign them. And through access, from which the domain access name come from, uh, you will be able to trigger the visibility and display of certain elements uh, among your different websites. Uh, so everything will be stored and managed within the same Drupal instance, the same uh, back office and unreached nation. This is the main point. Uh, basically, all the, the different domains will be only managed by the domain records. You're going to create uh, your list of records, and then you will be able to manage them independently. Uh, basically, the first thing to do is, of course, to create your Drupal instance and then to install the module. Uh, the first one you want to start with will be the domain access Drupal module. Uh, it will enable the core functionality. And then you will have other sub-modules that will um, com complete the different functionalities you want to bring and the different kind of entities you want to be able to assign to different domains. So like every module, you can install it with Drush command, composer, whatever you want. Enable it for Drupal 7, you'll be required to modify your settings.php file to implement some root. Uh, and the last step would be to edit your server configuration to be able to access your different domain uh, with the same, within the same instance of Drupal. Uh, so basically, you want just to allow uh, your uh, domain name registrator to, uh, to get access to your server IP. And then within your Apache or Nginx uh, configuration, you will take those domain names and implement them and re get redirect to the same instance of Drupal. So basically, once you've done that, uh, you will show you will find in the administration of Drupal uh, in the structure menu for Drupal 7 and in the configuration menu for Drupal 8 uh, a new administration page that is listing all the domains that you have, basically. So at first, you will only have one, which is the default and main domain that you have. And you will be able to cre create them. Oh, we don't see it too much, but whatever. Uh, basically, you can set whatever domain name you want. Uh, you can, it can be subdomain. So instance one dot something, your domain dot com, whatever. It can be a completely different domain name. So domain name dot com one, domain name dot com two, whatever. It could be completely different. Okay. It's all managed. Uh, are you able to read uh, what's uh, on your screen there? It's, it's a little. Because more. Yeah, right. yeah, anyway, you just uh, set up your domain name. Uh, if you want to enable HTTPS on it, uh, what is the domain status, active or disabled? And if you want uh, this domain particularly to be the default one, the one that will be accessed by the original uh, URL of, the, of your Drupal instance. So basically, where does the magic happen? It happens within the edition and the creation of your content entities. So uh, if you have enabled the uh, content type management with the main access, you will find a new menu uh, in, the, in the edition of your notes, and you will be able to select the domains that you want to assign your content to. <coughs> Uh, so now most of us are using Drupal 8. Uh, what is the differences between the two versions of the module? Uh, first of all, on Drupal 8, it's uh, easier to install because you don't, you don't even have to edit your settings.php file anymore. It's being done automatically. So no need to care of that. Uh, you will be required to install less module to cover larger functionalities because the, 
big um, improvements have been done in Drupal 8 to unify and like core entities. Um, one of the disadvantages of creating a Drupal 8 website with domain access will be the maturity of the module because right now not every entity uh, has been ported and supported by domain access module. So if you want something uh, that, does not, uh, that is not implemented yet uh, with the domain access suite, you will have to contribute and then create the functionality basically. On Drupal 7, the, the module is really mature and works very well. On Drupal 8, it's uh, being constantly improved and um, debugged and uh, additional functionalities are being implemented uh, as we speak. So basically, uh, the next point I want to address is, uh, I think one of the most important ones you have to keep in mind when you create a Drupal uh, domain access factory. Uh, basically, the way you manage uh, all to the, the pages of your website will be really dependent on uh, what you will need to do with it. Uh, so basically, you have a new website to create. You look up the you, could, you look at the, the mockups and you say, okay, here there is the header part, maybe the site logo, then there is some kind of uh, banner and you decide uh, what kind of entities you will create to develop uh, those uh, elements on your pages. The decisions you're, go you're going to take uh, are very important because it will have a direct impact on uh, the way that the websites will be administered by your client. So one... Um, One critical issue that is, to my point of view, not enough addressed is how the client would like to administer the websites. Because when you have one website to manage with Drupal, it's okay. You go to administration and then you find your way among the different administration menus and you will be able to do it. But what about managing 10, 100 of websites within one back office? It's tricky. You have to think about it in terms of uh, administration, administration cases. So basically, the kind of question you want to ask to your clients and to your project manager if you are a developer is, okay, who is going to administer the website? Is there gonna be one uh, webmaster for every website that are going to be created? Or is there gonna be several people manage, uh, managing each different website? So do you need to virtually divide and, um, uh, the, the administration of each website? Because one of the, the main purpose of domain access is to create synergy within your website. So the same stuff is gonna be everywhere on different websites. It's also a disadvantage and a risk because it's really easy to break everything. So you, be, you want to be really careful about the permissions and the administration level that you want to give to some user. Okay, so this is a quick example of a research product uh, result view. So just the point of the slide is that when you enable domain access and then you start to create your products and your content types and to assign them to different modules, uh, for content types, in instance, you will need to use some view filters to make sure that only the content assigned to some domain will be displayed in your results. Okay, so. I don't want to be too much into details for those slides because, as I said, the domain access module is a suite of modules. So you have the core functionality that brings the list of domain records and creation of domains, and I think the content type is managed by default as well. Uh, after that, it's completely up to you, and um, it's an architecture, architectural decision uh, to use either this core module or to enable and install more modules to enable um, domain access management on uh, blocks, for example, users or menus, 
whatever. You can do whatever you want, actually. It's up to you to decide and make a proper decision that fits your client needs. So basically, uh, it's completely, yeah, it's completely possible to do a very large website factory with only using content types. And at the administration point of view, the client will actually love it because you can create one master content type to manage everything. It's possible. So you have to also take into consideration the expertise level of your client when it comes to Drupal administration. Does it need to be at the same place, everything? Maybe you will need also to create um, a custom administration, administration page. Everything has an impact on the architecture decisions. So like I said, for Drupal 8, not every functionality are ported uh, when it comes to domain access. Um, we had a recently a quite big project uh, on Drupal 8 which was requiring a very proper architecture using different kind of entities and not only content types. So we contributed to the main uh, module of domain access. And then we also um, put it from scratch to Drupal 8, uh, some other functionalities. Uh, for instance, with uh, language uh, negotiations and management per domain, but also um, to enable the domain the assignation of uh, other kind of content entities like uh, blocks and vocabulary terms, menu links, and such things uh, to build a very proper architecture uh, to our new project. So right now, we had put a lot of efforts in uh, the porting of domain entity, and uh, we're going to push it to Drupalog pretty soon. So it will be available to, well, everybody to use it. Of course, it's uh, some yeah, fresh just, code. Just for the request uh, about the uh, domain name, uh, we got the maintainer here in this room. Yes, <laughs> Anton. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so now what's left to do regarding contribution on Drupal 8? Uh, basically, one of the main, um, one of the main um, issue to address would be to think about the way of um, over um, configuration management, because configuration in domain. Uh, in domain access Drupal 8 is managed by overrides. So basically, you go to uh, the administration of your Drupal site. You go to, I don't know, like Google Tag Manager administration UE. And then you will be able to uh, implement overrides for each domain uh, about the, the ID of your tag, for example. So in the name overrides, it, it, it's very, Literal. If you create a lot of it, maybe it's going to get messy. Maybe it's going to get hard to maintain and to handle such overrides. Uh, what we noticed a couple of weeks ago is that when you create overrides, uh, you are not able anymore to rebuild your website. It's blocky. So there is uh, some improvement to be done with uh, configuration and uh, the way it's handled by domain access. Uh, one of the last things that we would like to polish in the porting of uh, domain entity module is the way menus are handled. Because uh, right now, there is two separated modules that we would like to uh, bring together to have one master module to handle all kind of uh, additional entities. And menus is a different kind of entity. It's not a fieldable entity, so it doesn't work in the same way than uh, like users or vocabularies. So there's some work that needs to be done. And uh, some, some issues that are related to it uh, is one of, um, uh, it comes to the altering of uh, menus. Uh, so it could be improved in the core of Drupal. Um, related to configuration as well is the management of forms. Right now in Drupal 8, um, forms settings are only configuration. And it creates a problem because of the fragility of uh, the, the domain config overrides. 
Uh, basically, we had uh, troubles with uh, translation of uh, config overrides, and uh, this is why we couldn't really create a decent and manageable functionality to handle forms with domain access. So in our project, we had the need uh, to um, edit the reform per domain, like with some additional text and uh, mail handlers and such things. We had to create custom functionalities uh, to make that happen because there is no way to properly make forms work. If you have a single language website, like all English, it could work. You can use domain config to handle web form management with domain access. But otherwise, you're going to have problems. So maybe there's something to be thought and uh, developed at this, uh, for this entity. Uh, this is an example of domain override. So basically, you see on the left what was the default settings for some Google Tag Manager um, UI. And you create the override about some part of the settings. So you can see on the bottom right part of the screen some little widget that enable you to create the override on the page you are displaying in the administration. Um, in addition of the fragility of uh, the concept of overrides, it's also very risky because right now the module is uh, the selection you made in the widget is persistent. So if you create an override for one of the domain and then continue your navigation within administration, you're going to be creating a lot of override within the other pages. You see what I mean? The selection is not resetting. So it's, it's one of the risks of uh, handling uh, multi-site with domain access is the possibility to break, to break all your websites in uh, the split of a second. So maybe there's something to be improved here in terms of uh, permission and, uh, and user management. Okay, so that's uh, only to say that uh, we we will publish this slide uh, on 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 Fletcher. So if you got uh, uh, the need or the, the wish to to get them, uh, just search for us uh, on Google. So small summary of the presentation: when you want to build a website factory, you got several possibilities, multi-sites. Uh, custom distribution and domain access, and there's even other possibilities. When it comes to domain access, you have to be really careful about the architecture decision you take, and you need to base those decisions on the way you want the sites to be administered. If you do that and you uh, bring this knowledge to your developer teams and you make sure that the client understands the level of administration that he needs, uh, you will be able to produce nice sites and you, the client will be happy. Yeah, what's important is, well, access and permissions. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. Sorry, how you so busy with this domain alias? Because one of the slides. <laughs> What? The main alias for it is Google version. Which one? Ah, this one. Yeah, domain alias. Mm, that's but, uh, okay. I know it's not right. Domain alias, um, yeah. that's, uh, that's not for the path, path alias, that's the domain alias. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like uh, mapping uh, two domains yeah, on yeah, the yeah, same yeah, website. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, basically, one way you can use it is. Uh, when you got several environments, like uh, one environment for development, one for client release, and one for production, for example, you could use domain alias to map the different addresses yeah, yeah. among the environments. I I, yeah. yeah. You, you yeah. confuse with, uh, yeah, with yeah, the uh, alias path. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, configuration changes among different environments is a very large topic itself. And there's a better way to handle that with, I don't know, like config split module or uh, settings.php overrides for every moment. There's different solutions. Next question. Don't be shy. <laughs> We're not biting. Oh, I can go to the question. Yeah.
Uh, maybe you have real cases of uh, your idea implemented on maybe uh, some projects. Uh, yes, a, you, lot, a lot of Can things. you illustrate it yeah, for all the real experience? Uh, name this project. Well, we yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> The Drupal 8 project that we built this uh, last couple of months uh, is named Abbeyways. Uh, basically, it's a large corporation which um, sell trainings, like uh, training for management or whatever, uh, whatever you want to, to learn. Uh, it's addressed to mainly companies, and they have different brands. Brands into um, like uh, legal stuff, maybe uh, management stuff or whatever. They have different domains. For each domain, they have a brand. And one of the things that uh, they wanted to do with their new website was to regroup uh, the um, regroup uh, everything in terms uh, of uh, technicality. So create one instance of uh, every website for better maintenance and uh, development and uh, to be able to create new instances of uh, domains really quickly and by themselves without any development. So that's why they were interested into domain access. And at the uh, marketing level, they also wanted their website to localize each other so that uh, it would be actually visible for the customer that it's the same corporation handling different brands. Okay, that, that, that was an, another, uh, you know, another uh, strategy that uh, it was also um, an e-commerce website. So uh, they've got, uh, like he said, several businesses, but they, they, they wanted to have all their catalog uh, into the same database. And that was uh, into the same data database, but uh, several websites to manage them. So yes. that's why. It's a good point, actually, commerce. Uh, we started to play with the commerce module uh, among these uh, projects, but we didn't go into validation and development for that part yet. I think it will be done in the future, in the next year. Uh, but I would be really interested to see how domain access will, uh, you know, behave in addition of another big suite of modules such as commerce. I think it would be an interesting, interesting experience. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Together? Yeah, right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks. Good. Sorry, guys. So you are not solved yet. Uh, this issue is. Uh